can you each tell me a little bit about your characters and how they've evolved from the first film to the third? Would you like yeah, I'll, yeah, I'll, I'll feel this. Uh, I'll start. Um, yeah, uh, when we pick up this story, Hiccup is now a chief of Burke. Um, he's filled his, or trying to fill his father's boots. And, uh, and it's, he's learning a lesson, which is it's far easier to just sort of take issue with things and complain about them when you actually have to be the one in charge and run stuff. That's a whole other kettle of fish completely. Um, and... Uh, the way of life on Burke that Hiccup has fought so hard to create and 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 preserve um, is under threat, and that kind of forces something of a philosophical crisis on Hiccup because he has to ask himself if this paradise is actually as good as he thought it was. America, what was the question again? Yeah, <laughs> the character you play and question. how they evolved from the first to the third film. Wait, the first part was the character you play. The character I play and how she evolved. Yes. I have gotten to voice Astrid for all three films and six seasons of a television series. Um, and it's been such a joy. I mean, she's such an awesome, fun character to play. And I'm just so grateful that the that the producers and the director, writer really valued Astrid's role and, and that she never became just sort of like the girl to be one or you know the cheerleader on the side that she got to be in the thick of the fun and the action and she had a meaningful role to play um, in the in the larger journey and that Astrid and Hiccup have always been partners you know and that and not even always equal partners I think for a long time Astrid was better at most things than Hiccup. I, 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 you're <laughs> preaching the choir. Yeah, no, um, yeah. But they both bring different things to the to the table and I actually love that um, Hiccup has that quality that everyone, like no, for, for all of her courage and bravery and, and physical acumen and her axe wielding, you know, courage, um, Hiccup has a vision of the world that she recognizes that is special about him, that he sees things that, that could be possible that other people don't see. And, and she really respects that in him and they, and they bring different things to this relationship and, at the end, are they going to, I think they're going to like rule yes. together. Yes, clearly. Yes. Clearly. <laughs> no spoilers, no spoilers. Yeah. We'll negotiate yeah. the terms of the At least ruling. in the context of their home life. Yeah. <laughs> well, speaking of endings, <laughs> what is it like to say goodbye to this trilogy? Melancholy, uh, inherently bittersweet. Um, but yeah, I haven't quite adjusted because like in addition to those movies, we've been doing, like she said, the TV shows for so long and, it, and it's like... I have been playing this character consistently since I was uh, what, 24, 25, and I'm gonna be 37 in April, and that's like, yeah, it's gonna be a heck of a thing to say goodbye to. I haven't quite absorbed it yet. What do you want to take away from this? What do you hope audiences take away from this? A theme, a central idea? There's so much. I mean, for me, I think it, it really rivals any big epic out there, you know, the, Star Wars type epics, the Harry Potter type epics of, of just like the, the fundamental themes that we relate to as humans, you know, relationships and change and stepping into your destiny and the courage and the bravery it takes to live the life that you're meant to live. And, you know, I think Dean and the entire team protected the heart um, of the of the movie so fiercely that no matter how big and grand and exciting the action and the and the animation got, it was always grounded in in truth and in heart. And I think that's what's going to make it you know have a legacy that goes beyond this generation. 